was about three years old, I moved at the end of the Second World War with my parents to a tea estate in Assam, where my father was a manager of the planting of tea. And so from my birth almost, and certainly from that time, tea was in my blood because all around me were tea pickers and tea factories and tea, tea, tea. So that's the beginning of my acquaintance with tea. My book, Green Gold, The Empire of Tea, the title Green Gold is because it, tea is green, but it's worth gold. It's more precious than gold when it was shipped from China, for example, because it's very light. It's actually more valuable than gold. The leaf itself contains more than 500 different chemicals, and they've only discovered what two or 300 of them do. But what they did discover 150 years ago was that tea contains something called tannin, and tannin is what doctors call phenolics. And phenolics are the most powerful way of killing dangerous bacteria. So when tea spread, for example, to Britain, it revolutionized the death rate. And in the 18th century, the deaths began to fall, both in the cities where they fell among children and grown-ups. And so the British Industrial Revolution was made possible by tea. It didn't cause it, but without tea, we could not have had an Industrial Revolution. And without the Industrial Revolution, we wouldn't be here. Tea has always promoted um, exchange because if you love the products of another country, it would mean that you might become interested in it. You appreciate that these people are producing something that is very worthwhile for you. And it uh, also promotes understanding because it's a very peaceful drink. That's why it also fits in with Buddhism. Tea events and Jujama festivals, as well as much else, have allowed me to make friends with many Chinese, and they come here, and then we go back to China. And that is part of one of the great events of my last 20 years, which is getting to know China. It's very beautiful, um, filled with roses. It's a very traditional English garden with climbing plants and apple trees. So it's something like a garden in Alice in Wonderland. It just feels like that. And then suddenly to transform it into an international garden because you are having a tea event adds to the magic of it. I think Cambridge is a very special place. The people that come to not just tea, but to understand Asian culture already have a background in Buddhism or philosophy, or they've been to the Far East, or they're curious. And I think they just want to develop that. There were two tea ceremonies. So the first one was our one, and then there was a Chinese one. With matcha, or mocha, it's uh, based on the 12th century background. It was the tea that was made in the Song period, and it's powdered tea. So it's preserved in Japan. Japan preserves certain elements from Chinese culture. It's like a, a cultural repository, a museum. So when we make it in two different forms. We make it in thin, which is uh, usu, and then also koi, which is kneaded. And that takes some time to, to learn how to make it. I've had some students for many, many years. So I have a whole group of different people, but they're all linked in actually wanting to not just find the pathway through tea, but an interchange as well. I'm a girl from the north of China, but I did study and worked in Xiamen in Fujian for many years before I moved to England. I was a part of the activity which tried to integrated into the format of music, art, and poetry. They are just different formats, but I believe the philosophy is the same. It's all demonstrated the idea of, for a very, very long time, we're just part of the nature, and we still are, and we take from the nature. Um, but that particular uh, occasion, or many tea ceremonies we gather together, it's always also remind me how I return 
how I make a good use of it. Both Cambridge and London, um, international based and full of diversity, diverse cultures and being people from all over the world. So we organize quite a few times of tea tasting sessions and tea ceremony occasions. I can see people from all over the whole world, they show great passion and interest on tea. And they just simply want to know how to drink it, how to brew it. At the same time, we learn a lot of their cultures and their way of living, including drinking and the way of thinking of this drinking. So it's exchange of the idea. It's also a chance to embrace each other's culture and embrace each other's difference. We would like to organize more occasion like this.